Hi, this is a video about the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, abbreviated as ANS, provides an efferent pathway for the involuntary control of most organs. The autonomic nervous system provides the effector arm for homeostatic reflexes, example the control of blood pressure, and also allows the integration and modulation of function by central mechanisms in the brain in response to environmental and emotional stimuli such as exercise, thermal regulation, fight or flight, etc. The autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. The sympathetic system transmits impulses to vertebra ganglia and is responsible for dilating the pupil inhibiting salivation, constricting blood vessels, accelerating heart rate, stimulating sweat production, stimulating glucose metabolism, bile release, inhibition of digestion as well as stimulation of norepinephrine and epinephrine release via the celiac ganglion. The sympathetic system also inhibits intestinal secretion via the superior mesenteric ganglion. It also stimulates orgasm and ejaculation as well as inhibit bowel movement and urine passage via the inferior mesenteric ganglion. Therefore, we can see why the sympathetic system is popularly known as the fight or flight system. Now, the parasympathetic system, on the other hand, works to constrict the pupil stimulate tears, saliva production, constrict the airways, slow the heart rate, stimulate digestion, stimulate intestinal secretions, and also stimulate erection. Therefore, it is commonly known as the rest and digest system. Both the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems contain preganglionic neurons originating in the central nervous system that synapse with non-myelinated postganglionic neurons in the peripheral ganglia. Postganglionic neurons innervate the target organ or tissue. Preganglionic neurons of both sympathetic and parasympathetic systems release acetylcholine in the synapse which acts on cholinergic nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic fiber. The type of postganglionic neurotransmitters and receptors correlates with the kind of system and organ involved. Parasympathetic peripheral ganglia are generally found close to or in the target organ, whereas sympathetic ganglia are largely located in either the two sympathetic chains located on either side of the vertebra column, known as the paravertebral ganglia, or in the fused prevertebral ganglia of the visceral plexuses in the abdomen and the pelvis. Sympathetic postganglionic neurons are therefore generally long, whereas the parasympathetic neurons are generally short. An exception is the sympathetic innervation of the adrenal gland where preganglionic neurons directly innervate the adrenal medulla. So as we can see, the sympathetic system is more pervasive than the parasympathetic system. When an organ is innervated by both systems, they act antagonistically. However, there is a high degree of central coordination so that an increase in sympathetic activity to an organ is commonly accompanied by a decrease in parasympathetic activity. So sympathetic and parasympathetic activity may modulate different functions in the same organ. For example, the heart rate is increased by sympathetic stimulation and decreased by parasympathetic stimulation. Sympathetic preganglionic neurons 
originate in the lateral horn of the segments T1 to L2 of the spinal cord and exit the cord via the ventral horn on their way to the paravertebral or prevertebral ganglia. Sympathetic postganglionic neurons terminate in the effector organs where they release noradrenaline, also known as norepinephrine. Noradrenaline and adrenaline, which are released by the adrenal medulla, are catecholamines. They activate adrenergic receptors, which are linked via G proteins to cellular effector mechanisms. There are two main classes of adrenergic receptors, namely the alpha and beta receptors. Now these alpha and beta receptors are further subdivided into several subtypes. For example, we can have the alpha 1, the alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, etc. No adrenaline and adrenaline are equally potent on the alpha 1 receptors, which are linked to GQ proteins and are commonly associated with smooth muscle contraction, for example, in the smooth muscles of blood vessels. The alpha 2 receptors are GI protein linked and they cause inhibition of transmitter release as well as contraction of smooth muscle. Now all beta receptors are linked to GS protein and activate adenylocyclase in order to make cyclic adenosine monophosphate also known as CAMP. This eventually increases calcium concentration and the subsequent relaxation of smooth muscle for example in the blood vessel as well as in the airways it also increases the force of contraction of cardiac muscle as well as the heart rate now no adrenaline is more potent at beta 1 receptors and adrenaline is more potent at b2 receptors a few sympathetic neurons release acetylcholine at the effector site, for example, the sweat glands. These neurons are known as the sympathetic cholinergic neurons. Parasympathetic preganglionic neurons originate in the brain stem. They run in cranial nerve 3, cranial nerve 7, cranial nerve 9, and cranial nerve 10. They are also seen in the second and third sacral segments of the spinal cord. Now, parasympathetic activation causes secretion in many glands, for example, the bronchial mucous glands, and either contraction as seen in the bladder detrusor or relaxation as seen in the bladder internal sphincter. Action potential in incoming neurons are transmitted by the release of neurotransmitters that bind to receptors on the postganglionic neuron or effector tissue. Between neurons, example in the ganglia, this occurs within the classical synapse where the axon terminates in the bulbous swelling or buton separated from the target by a narrow synaptic cleft. Postganglionic neurons branch repeatedly and have numerous butons along their length, forming varicosities. Synthetic enzymes are transported down the axon into the buton, where they synthesize neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine and noradrenaline from precursors transported into the buton. Now, the neurotransmitter is stored in vesicles and the arrival of action potential at the nerve ending causes an influx of calcium, fusion of vesicles with the membrane and the release of neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter then binds to postsynaptic receptors and activate the response. Neurotransmitter release can be suppressed by feedback onto the presynaptic inhibitor receptors, for example, the alpha-2 receptors 
meant for adrenergic synapses. Neurotransmitters must be removed at the end of activation. So in cholinergic synapses, choline esterase rapidly breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetate, which are recycled. However, some may escape into interstitial fluid. In adrenergic synapses, most noradrenaline is rapidly taken up again by the nerve ending via an adenosine triphosphate dependent transporter known as the aptic one. Recovered noradrenaline is recycled. Some facilitated diffusion via aptic two also occurs into smooth muscle. Excess noradrenaline and sympathomimetic amines such as tyramine found in some poor staffs are metabolized in the neuron by mitochondrial monoamine oxidase, popularly known as MAO or MAO. No adrenaline and other catecholamines that enter the circulation are metabolized sequentially by catechol O methyltransferase, also known as COMT, as well as monoamine oxidase or MAO. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.